can you give me any reflections you have? I know it's only early days on what you've seen at the summit so far. Uh, so far, the conversation really seems to be about how do we balance the opportunity that artificial intelligence presents all of us as participants of society against the risks that it could potentially uh, ensue. And personally, I'm a massive AI optimist. I would love to see us embracing artificial intelligence. But the fastest way to adopt this technology is by making it really safe. And the safer it is, the faster we'll adopt it. So I don't think that necessarily those two perspectives are in conflict. Do you think right now with the debate being very much on the risk of these large, large, large models, some way off, we are ignoring the current risk in the work that you do, is there an immediate risk from the AI that's already out there, not let alone the stuff that we're yet to develop? It's interesting because the conversation is around how you use regulation to manage that risk. But of course, in cybersecurity, you're operating against people that are unregulatable. They are the baddies. That They're not going to be not doing something because it's illegal or against the law. They're going to be operating the fastest, quickest way to earn as much money or you know, enact their actions as they can. So making sure that we are able to continue to innovate on the defensive side and not being outpaced in innovation on the attacker side or the offensive side is something that's really important. Help me understand that. So what you're effectively saying is we, you, the good guys, in the, or us, the good guys, then we're both the good guys, we need access to the latest, most powerful AI to stay ahead of the bad guys? In cybersecurity, AI is essential. Like We are talking about technology that's able to take decisions and actions within sort of seconds and fractions of a second when humans are very much minutes and hours. That's not enough in cybersecurity. So AI is an essential component. But yes, we're also seeing AI being used by adversaries and it becomes really this sort of race of innovation between good guys and bad guys. So what we're seeing, for example, is in terms of spear phishing emails, so your classic emails uh, trying to get you to click a link or do something that you otherwise wouldn't do, since the advent of these generally available AI tools like um, ChatGPT, for example, we've seen a 135% increase in the linguistic complexity of those emails. So what that means is gone are the days of those clumsily worded, grammatically incorrect emails. They're able to create a much more convincing and trustworthy communication uh, by using these, these tools. And so effectively what you're saying is because you need access to the, those that best AI. Is there a risk here, is what you're saying, that we over-regulate, that you slow access down, that you make it harder? Uh, Speaking from the perspective of security, I would be worried if regulation was stymieing innovation. But from all of the conversations that have been happening at the summit today, it seems to be a really balanced conversation about, we don't know what the technology of tomorrow looks like. So regulating it today is probably not the right approach. But instead, how do we agree the principles of what good, safe technology looks like, and also what would be the early warning signs of what bad looks like, such that if that does occur, we're able to spot it and respond quickly. So it does seem to be a really good balanced conversation, understanding this is going to be something something that needs to evolve with the technology. And just in case I didn't mention it before, are you concerned that there's a bit too much emphasis on that sort of frontier AI stuff than on these more immediate threats like this, the the, uh, like cybersecurity, although there's some overlap there, but the, the ones that people are dealing with right now. There is, su- there is a lot of conversation about frontier AI and these large language models, these huge data sets that are solving very broadly publicly available issues. I know, because I see it every day, AI is a really, really broad toolkit. Yeah. And you have got these large language models, a really interesting part of it. But there's a lot as well in what we call sort of narrow AI. So just thinking, how do you solve a very targeted, specific problem? And I want to make sure the conversation continues to understand all the facets of AI rather than just these large language models. <laughs>